Welcome to the next part of JShell. Now in this video, we'll talk about uh, different commands. So we have already seen all these commands listed here. Let's try to explore some more commands and some more operations. Now before opening this JShell again, uh, what I did is I changed my folder. Now currently I'm in Java 9 folder. Again, we'll talk about that why I have uh, shifted to a different folder. So it's, it's a simple folder which is called as Java 9. Uh, it's there on desktop, so it is on my machine. Uh, so what exactly I have in this in this folder is I have these three files. We have alien.java, we have demo, and we have seen this demo before in the first video, right? Now let's go back here and let's say CLS and let's go back to JShell. So I will say JShell. Okay, we are into JShell now. So let's try to let's try to do something else now. So what I will do is the first thing I want to do is I want to create some variables because if I say if I say vas now using this vas command you can see all the available variables in your in your jshell now we have not created any variables yet right so what we'll do is we'll say int i equal to nine so that's my first variable we'll say int uh, num is equal to three and we'll say double uh, d is equal to nine point two. And you can see we got three values. We can also create some other variables of some classes. We will see that later. Uh, so if I say was now, and you can see we got these three variables. Now can I create a variable of a class and will it be listed here? Let's try. Or will I, if I perform some operation like four plus uh, nine. So the moment you perform an operation, you, you can see we have a temporary variable here, which is dollar four, right? So what we can do is if I say was again, by using up add, or you can see this is also a variable which is dollar four here, right? So yeah, so this makes sense. Now if I create a different variable, now normally we have seen scanner, so we can create a scanner variable here, or, or, I mean scanner reference or reference variable, but this time I want to go for J frame. Now why J frame is because oh, not J frame J frame. Now J frame belongs to a different package, right? So before we have worked on uh, scanner, we have worked with string class. Now all these classes are by default imported thanks to our default imports. You can see we have all these imports here. But what if you want to use a class which is not inside this? So what we normally do is we uh, we import the class by ourselves by saying import and pack in, in import and the package name or the class name. What we'll be doing here is let's use JFrame and let's see how can we. So, do we have any shortcut to do that? Because I don't want to import the package by myself, right? Uh, we are using JShell, a powerful tool. So, will JShell will do it for you? Let's try. So, there's a shortcut for Windows. If you're using Windows machine, again, uh, I'm not sure about different OS shortcuts. But specifically in Windows, what we can do is you can say Shift Tab. So, just press Shift Tab and release the release the buttons and then say I. So, let me repeat. Uh, type shift and tab and press uh, shift and tab and then release the buttons and then press i now it will give you two choice it will say do nothing or import of course i want to import so i will say one that's a choice and you can say it says imported java x swing dot j frame and now you can create object of j frame so i will say j frame f equal to new uh, j frame and you got an object of j frame now and you can say it works you got uh, object now, if I say was, once again, if I say was, you can see we got JFrame reference as well. Of course, with the value, the default value, what, what, what it is, doesn't matter. So yeah, so we, we got different, uh, we got different variables. So the point to remember, you can use shortcuts to fix the imports. But how do you know what are the shortcuts available? It's very simple. If you simply say help, and if you type shortcuts, uh, shortcuts, you can see it will give you those three shortcuts. It, it, it will say uh, tabs for uh, getting the, uh, I mean, for completion completion of your code, maybe it will give you some suggestions. Uh, if you say shift and tab and V, uh, it will help you in completing the expression. Again, I will see, I will show you in some time. And we have shift tab I for fixing the imports. So uh, you can see we have uh, steps here. I guess if you are using different different um, OS, and if you say help shortcuts, it will give you that particular shortcut. So this is for Windows. So if you're using Mac, just try this and it will give it will show you the shortcuts. Okay, now how do what, what is this V? So we know about I now we can import the import, we can import stuff. What is V here? Now let's say if I'm using uh if I if I'm saying nine. Now I want to store this nine in a variable, or maybe nine plus two. I want to store this operation in a variable. What we can simply do is we can say shift tab and V. Now you can see that the moment you do that, it will give you 
uh, it will create a variable for you it will it is saying int because 9 plus 2 will give you int where it is asking you for uh, it, will, uh, it is asking you for a name right of course it will not give you a name by default so you will say k any variable doesn't matter you can say we got k as 11 so if you want to create a variable and if you want to yeah if you want to declare a variable you can simply type shift tab and release the buttons and press b uh, it will be also applicable for jframe so if i'm using a jframe here and oh what's that okay let me just do that once again if i say new jframe and if i say control shift v you can see it is it has created the uh, it is declaring a variable now it is asking for the name i will say my frame and you can see we got the variable so that's how you can use those shortcuts okay so we have talked about uh, we, can, we have talked about how to how to use that shortcuts now what else what else so now we know we have a we have a we have a command called as vas which will give you all the variables uh, what about if i create a, a method so let's say if I, if I want to get a method called as public void show i'm creating a new method now right and this method will sprint it will simply have a variable int i equal to nine that's it and then if I close this, you can see we got the method method created here. Okay, so if I create 10, 10 methods, how would I know how many methods I've created? So it's very easy. So we can simply type methods and you can see it will list all the methods which are there. So we can use slash methods for getting the method names. In fact, you can also use slash m, will it work? Yeah, so it is shortcut. So instead of typing methods, you can type m, it will give you all the methods. Now what else? Uh, what about the classes? If I get a class here, let's say class uh, person or maybe class human. I love humans. So if I say class human and if I do if I do nothing there, if I simply close this, you can see we got the human class. And if I also get an interface here, we can also do that. We can say interface uh, move or maybe interface movable. And if I declare nothing there, I'm keeping it blank just to show you the effect. So if I say, so if I want to know how many classes or interfaces I have, you can simply type types. So types will give you all the list of types. We have human type, we have movable interface, right? So if you want to know about classes interface, we can say types. So this will give you all the things. So we got var, vars for variables, we got methods for methods, we got types for classes and interfaces. Okay, this makes sense. Now what else we can do here? Uh, now let's say if you want to open a predefined file and that's why I have just shifted to a different folder, right? If I want to show you the folder, in Java 9 folder, I already have a class called as alien. If I open this class alien, uh, you can see we got a class alien which has a string variable tech. It doesn't matter what variables we have there. Important is we got an alien class. I want to create a same class in my shell. So we can do that, right? We can type class alien, we can define it. But what if you want to open up existing file? It's very simple. You can simply use a command called as open. So using open, first of all, let me just go back there. Yeah. So using open, we can, oh, uh, what's that? Let me use this as a notepad and yeah. So using open, we can specify which file you want to open. So I will open alien.java. Now the one way to do that, when you, mention, when you mentioned that you are working with alien, now you can create object of alien. So you can say new alien, alien, and you can see it works. It, you are getting an object of alien, right? It works. And even if you say types now, uh, you, you can see we also got alien. So we are not creating alien class here. It's just that we are opening it. So it, that class becomes a part of your JShell code, right? It's that simple. So you can actually open the existing file. Uh, what else we can do? Now, once we, okay, so we have done so many things, right? And let's say uh, after doing all these things and now you want to, uh, close your, if you want to shut down your machine and you want to work tomorrow. Now what will happen is when you shut down your machine, when you restart your, I mean, when you start your machine again, you will not have the same code, right? We have created so many variables, we have created so many types and so many methods. How will you get all these things? So you want to work on the same thing tomorrow, what you will do? So before exiting, what you can do is you can save all this command in a file. Uh, I will say my code dot uh, txt you can use txt you can use any any extension you want logically if you mention jsh it will make more sense that means the file is a jshell file right uh, again txt will also works that's fine and if i do that you can see it is storing a file but where uh, if i open my folder you can see we got my code dot jsh if i open this with a uh, notepad plus uh, plus you can see we have we have all the commands here so whatever commands we have executed uh, everything is available here right so now next time so let's say after some time if you're opening a new shell 
so let me just do that if I open a new shell um, okay where so I will, I will go to desktop and I will go to Java 9 okay so if I come back here and if I open J shell and if I try to use alien or if I type if I type types you can see we don't have any type here because this is a new shell so what you can do is you can load the existing shell existing commands you can say my codes or you can send it to your friends as well you can type I mean you can execute all the commands you can send that file to your friends and they will they will open it and once you open the file now what you can do is if you, when you say types you can see we got all the types so yes it is also possible you can use this thing I mean both the cells are same now because they all have the same history right so yeah so that's how you can work with this uh, do we have some other thing okay so we have talked about open and save let me just write it down on a notepad uh, not here where is my notepad it's here yeah so we have uh, we have save and we have open so you can save a file you can open a file that's awesome uh, do we have something extra so what we can also do is uh, let's say if I have a statement so let me just go back here here okay and I want to perform an operation. Let's say if I want to type uh, 8 plus 2. So if I if I type 8 plus 2, of course, you will get 10, right, with, with, on a variable 14. Now, what if I want to execute the same command again? It's very easy, right? You can simply press up arrow and you can enter. You will get the same operation. Otherwise, what you can do is you can give a slash and you can mention 14. And if I say enter, you can see we got the same value, 10. So what we are doing is we are saying slash v. So whenever you say slash, that means you are talking to JShell, right? You're not writing a Java code. You are talking to JShell. So or you're commanding to JShell. Then that's, that's, that's what it's called as commands. So when you say 14 here, it means uh, when, you, when I say list, you can see in the list, we have 14, which is 8 plus 2. So it will execute the same statement. So we can do that. So example, if I say 7 plus 2 now, so we got 16. When I say slash 16, it will execute the same thing. Or what you can do is you can give a slash and you can give an uh, exclamation mark. Even exclamation will do the same thing. It will execute the last statement. So 7 plus 2, you can execute that. So if you want to execute a particular statement, uh, you can go with the number. If you want to execute the last statement, you can go with exclamation. So we also have exclamation. So slash exclamation. That's awesome. Uh, okay, one more. Now if I say var, okay, so you can, you can see we have so many variables here. I don't want this 15 variable. I don't want 15. So what you can also do is you can mention slash uh, drop and you can mention 15. Okay, you can see this. It, it, you can drop the variables. And now if I say var, uh, you will not find 15 there. You can also you can also kill, you can also remove this num. Let's try that. I will say drop num and you can see num is gone now. So if I say var, as you can see we don't have num there. So we also have a drop command which will drop the variables. You can not just drop variables, you can drop the classes, you can drop the methods. So you can play with it. So yeah, that's how that's about JShell. I've, I have tried I tried to cover most of the things in JShell. Uh, once I, I, I come across new things, I will surely make a video on that. So I hope you enjoyed the entire series on JShell. Uh, and if you liked it, click on the like button and do share this video with your friends on Facebook or WhatsApp. Uh, that's it. Thank you so much for watching.